there. My name is Dr. Marissa May, and I am super excited to be with you for the College Algebra. Um, I want to do a little bit of explaining for our learning guides, so you'll kind of know what to expect in each one of the videos. Uh, to do that, let me switch over so we can see you should be able to download this learning guide. If you don't, I'll put be sure and put the link to it in the comments section, uh, in the description, so you'll be able to download it. Um, I've designed these learning guides to provide you with examples for each and every week of our course. Now, that being said, I don't want the videos to be massive in size, so I'm going to restrict them to the link that you would down click here would just be these four problems. And then I'll have another link on page two. Again, you would click here and this video then would show you the problems that are on that page, just so you kind of understand the layout. Now, in order to make sure you don't miss any of the content that I'm going to be providing throughout our course, be sure to click subscribe and then click the bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video that might be helpful for you in our course. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and get started with our topics for today. And this is for week one. Now, these four problems are going to focus on the order of operations and the distributive property. So I have given you the order of operations just in case it's been a while. Now, this may look familiar to you, may have learned it as PEMDAS or possibly as please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That was kind of those mnemonic devices that we use in order to help students remember. But it tells us the order in which we should solve problems. So let's take a look at problem number one and follow along the order of operations there. Now, in this problem, we don't have any parentheses, so we actually get to skip that step. We also don't have any exponents, so we can skip that step as well. The next step we come to is to multiply. So that means that we're going to multiply or divide, whichever comes first in order from left to right. So in this particular problem, we're going to multiply the 4 times 3 first, which will give us 12. Notice that I left the 5 plus and the minus 2 after, because now that we have multiplied, we're going to add or subtract in order from left to right. So we're going to add 5 plus 12, which will give me 17, minus 2, which would then give me 15. Now, I bet you can guess that probably the most common error is that people want to go in order from left to right, meaning they want to add that 5 plus 4 and then multiply by 3 and then subtract 2. But in fact, what we should actually do is to follow the order of operations. So hopefully that helps you. Our next problem focuses on the distributive property. And I know it sounds crazy and corny, but sometimes we teach students that's the hippity hoppity distributive property, right? Where when we m distribute the four to each term in this parentheses, we multiply it. So four times X gave us four X, four times three gave us 12. Let's try it in our problem. We'll distribute the three to the, I'm sorry, we'll distribute the two to the three X, which will give me six X minus, because there's a minus in the parentheses, then we distribute the 2 to the 4y, which gives me 8y. Now, you may ask yourself, well, can't we go ahead and subtract the 6x minus 8y? And the answer is no, because they are not like terms. Now, just summarize briefly, like terms have the same variables and the same exponents. 6x and 8y don't have those same variables and same exponents, so we can't combine them. In problem three, we're going to use the distributive property as well. We're just going to use it in a little bit different way. We're going to distribute both terms in the first parentheses to the second parentheses. So that means we're going to distribute the x first. When we do that, x times x gives me x squared, and x times minus 3 gives me negative 3x. Then let us distribute negative 4 to both terms in the second parentheses. Negative 4 times x would give me negative 4x, 
And negative 4 times negative 3 would give me positive 12. Now, look at those two terms in the middle. That's where we see the like terms. They have the same variables and the same exponents. And so we have x squared, or x to the second power. Then we have minus 3x minus 4x, which would give me minus 7x. And then we have plus 12. And that would be as simplified as I can go because none of the rest of them have the same variable and the same exponent. I see those two terms have the same x's, right? They have the same variables, but they don't have the same exponents. So that doesn't work for us. Okay. Now, last problem on this page. Problem four is very much like that last problem in problem three, but it asks it in a little bit different way. So let's take a look. We have 4x in front of a parenthesis, so we're going to distribute it. I've got 4x times x, which is 4x to the second. Then I've got 4x times negative 3k. So that's 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then I've got an x and a k on it. And I think that's 60 needs to have a kx on it. So we'll fix that. Okay, now here's what we're trying to do in this problem is we're trying to make sure that both sides are the same. So I want you to see that we have a 4x. So that those are the same, those are good. But look at the other two terms. What I'm trying to determine is negative 12xk equal to negative 60xk. Hmm. And I think, let me fix this problem here. I think it should be a negative 60x, not a negative 60k. So we'll fix that. So the x's are fine, right? We have the x's here. So we're really saying, okay, if negative 12k equals negative 60, then what did k have to be? Hmm, well, what times negative 12 would give you negative 60? That would have to be 5. And so that's what we're looking for in this problem is seeing if both sides are actually equivalent expressions. Well, thanks for watching for part one of week one. I'll go ahead and link the next video here for page two.